I think the special thing about Beattie Park is the people that come to this venue and their connection with the venue itself. Beattie Park's got good memories. You know, people come in here and they remember that, that connection. The night before the pool was opening, we decided to be the first ones to swim in the pool. Oi! Why are you doing? Go on, go on, go on, go on. 64, 65, I was a pool attendant here. We were in the area and I said, well, I'm having photos here. Watching the people through the viewing windows when they were in the water and things like that. I was really nervous of going down the slide when I was little. The early mornings with the steam rising across the pool. I had my 50th here, which was pretty incredible. Just such a sight, the grandstands, the big blue roof. Teaching them, you just feel so proud once they achieve swimming by themselves. It's just great to see that whole spectrum of the community just gravitating to this place. Nineteen sixty two was a very big year for Perth. That was the year that Perth was seen. I can see the outline of the town and a very bright light just to the south of it. At the beginning of the year, John Glenn saw us from space. Roger, that is uh, Perth and Rockingham you're saying there. At the end of the year, the whole world saw us host the Commonwealth Games. And as part of that they needed a number of facilities, including the Perry Lakes Athletic Stadium and of course for swimming and water polo, you needed an Olympic-sized pool with grandstands. When it was built in 1962, Beattie Park was an architectural icon. The stands that you see today, with their kind of distinctive blue glass on the outside, was really a funky 60s kind of thing. Well, it was all new and exciting back then. We'd never seen anything like that in Perth before. Beattie Park was one of the things that put Perth on the map. It was a huge change to Perth to have this spectacular facility and to be able to host the Commonwealth Games in that period was a huge deal for Perth. Prince Philip helped launch the Games and he was a, a really popular figure actually when the Games were on because he didn't just cut the ribbon and disappear. He stayed around for the whole Games and was there at events and things. The Queen Mother has visited, we've had Princess Margaret and her husband visiting. If you look in the visitor book, there's been every kind of Olympic and champion swimmer. A lot of people were connected with this place after the Games, when it became an entertainment precinct. Bee Park was the place for everything from the Miss West Coast pageant finals through to a whole host of amazing bands. You've got an act saying, well, what in hell's name are we doing playing in a swimming pool? There was enough room for the Bee Gees and a symphony orchestra. We did Roy Orbison, the Everly Brothers played there. Susie Quattro played there. The Kinks happened to play in Perth on the wettest day that I can ever remember. The wind was howling. It lifted the canopy of the stage and parked it into the diving pool. Oh, it was a great atmosphere here up in the uh, stands and big concert was Man for Man's Earth Band, Free and Deep Purple. The girls were jumping in the water to get to the band and the crowd just went crazy, all singing along to all those hits from back in the 60s. The Jacksons was a terrific concert because it was the peak of the Jacksons' popularity because obviously Michael was their front man. The kids were crazy about them. Most of the night we spent trying to stop people from scaling Beatty Park Aquatic Centre. Back in the day, swimming and diving were the pinnacle sports. There's a huge history of the squads that were training regularly at Bean Park, produced lots of amazing champions. Dawn Fraser wasn't the only famous person to swim in that pool and to break records in it. A whole range of Perth-based swimmers really got their career starts in that pool. But the diving boards were the main attraction for decades. People just had to come here to go off a 10 metre diving board into a 16 foot pool. And a lot of those little kids still recount as adults today overcoming their fears, jumping off those diving boards. There was a lot of people just love to come here and cause havoc centered around those diving boards. I enjoyed the carnivals when we had the big girls school, the boys school carnivals here and they'd all be up in the grandstands singing their anthems. 
because we were the only pool that had a grandstand that could hold all the different people from a variety of schools, it just created a fantastic atmosphere where schoolboy or schoolgirl swimmers felt like Olympic athletes when they swam at Beatty Park because of that roar coming from the crowd. The hairs on the back of your arms would stand up and it was just a sight to see. Beatty Park has constantly evolved since it was built in 1962 and now it's a community facility so we changed the pool depths, we took away the diving boards. Today Beatty Park is just an amazing community hub and if you think about it it's intergenerational. People that have learned to swim here bring their kids back here to learn to swim, they bring their grandchildren here to learn to swim. There's definitely generations of people going through Beatty Park. I mean, my mum likes to remind us that she did her swim carnivals here and then brought me to swimming lessons. I finally become a swim teacher after all of these years. It's definitely a weird full circle moment for me. This is really important work and this is something that I'm really proud of. It's not just running a pool. We've got a creche, a cafe, a retail shop, group fitness. You've got a 750 square metre gym. as well as all the associations they've got with all the different groups that use Beatty Park. Those people rely heavily on that social interaction. They all catch up for a coffee after a swim or they've done a particular aerobic class and they all catch up and have a chat and they quite often see each other socially. Here, sure you get physically fit, but I think it's also that mental connection, that emotional connection that means so much more and that's what adds to the experience. All the people here at Beatty Park really make you feel like it's home and welcomed every day. So it's just been a sheer pleasure and joy to be able to train in such a wonderful facility. I love the setting. I really love the look of the buildings and the old history of the place. I think it's just really inspiring. It's got a lot of character and you can go from one end of the centre to the other and they're just completely different. Beatty Park is definitely the jewel in the crown and I think the city should be proud of the fact that it is here today, that it remains to be a part of life for the greater community of Perth. Everything was happening here and I think it'll keep going that way. Betty Park is really special, I don't think it could be replicated. It's nice to be able to live in history, not just going to a museum, but you're actually using a facility that's historical. And that's good to preserve some of the, what I would call icons, and I think Beatty Park is one of them. Beatty Park in 2022 is still the real deal. history at Beatty Park and this place means so much to so many people whether it's memories of the Empire Games, swimming carnivals, to seeing amazing live acts here. There's so much to celebrate so please join us in wishing Beatty Park a happy 60th birthday. <laughs> <laughs>